Hi, just over 12 months ago, I bought a brand new electric car, a 2020 Hyundai Ioniq, fully electric, none of that hybrid rubbish. And as promised, after 12 months of owning my first fully electric car, I'd give you my opinion, not only on electric car owning and electric car in general, but also uh, stick around for the end if you want to hear sort of like a mini review of my thoughts of owning, in particular, um, the 2020 model Hyundai Ioniq, good and bad. So let me take you on a drive, shall we? Let's go. First thing you're noticing about an electric car, it's on. It's sitting here. There's no sound. There's no vibration. Oh, it's beautiful. Anyway, I'll put it in drive and let's go for a drive around Borkham Hills and I'll let you know what I think of electric cars. So the TLDR of owning an electric car after 12 months, would I uh, go, did I regret my purchase of a fully electric car and would I go back to an ICE car, an internal combustion engine car? The answer is no, I do not regret it and no, I would never buy another internal combustion engine car. Jeez, I think I've hit peak hour traffic here. As soon as we get out of this stupid traffic, I'll start. <laughs> I, shouldn't, I shouldn't have started here. This was It's, it's lunchtime. Norwest Boulevard. Ugh. Having an electric car can't save you from the traffic, unfortunately. Well, it does. It has some benefits. Um, in stop-start traffic, electric cars are... Well, that's one of the best things for them is stop-start traffic. You're not chewing any energy by just sitting here at the roundabout. That's one of the fantastic things. All right, we're out of here. <laughs> Let's go. In fact, I'll go straight down here, shall we? Now the first thing about an electric car is that it drives like normal, at least this Ionic um, does, and I've driven other electric cars, Teslas and uh, Leafs as well, and yeah, it, it just drives and handles like a normal car. You don't know the difference, except for one of the major things which I mentioned is the lack of sound, vibration, uh, pollution as well. So we actually, uh, Mrs. EEV blog calls the other car, the internal combustion engine car, the stinky car. Because like, you don't realize how much the exhaust in internal combustion engine cars stink. And by having a fully electric car, you just don't get any of that. There's no sound, there's no vibration. They're completely silent when you stopped at the lights. It's just absolutely fantastic driving experience. And the other thing is, of course, the instant acceleration. When you put your foot down, that's it. Like, it just goes instantly. Um, even in one of the wimpiest electric cars on the market, the Hyundai Ioniq, it's got no shortage of grunt when you put your foot down. Even in normal mode, I just drive it around in normal, not in eco or not in uh, sports mode, and it's absolutely great. This was a bad idea coming this way. I should have just started in the back streets and ended in the back streets. And then, yeah, I should have just drove around in circles in the suburbs anyway. Well, the other great thing about electric cars is that uh, the regen braking. The re you get so used to regen braking. When I take this, I usually leave it in like auto mode. So when I take my foot off the pedal now, it's slowing down. And like in 95% of cases, when you take your foot off the pedal, that's what you want to do. You want to slow down. So why not have the car do it for you and also put energy back into the battery? I, it, it's just a winner all around regen braking. Of course, the other advantage with fully electric cars is that uh, you can coast as well. If you turn off the regen braking, um, if you take your foot off the pedal, it'll just keep going. And it's only the rolling resistance of the tires and the uh, air resistance of the car, the coefficient of uh, drag coefficient, that's the only thing that's um, slowing the car down. So, you know, if you're on the highways or, you know, out on long stretches or something like that, you probably don't want regen braking on. You turn on coasting mode. But um, for just regular city driving like I do, and uh, I almost always leave uh, the regen on. It's just great. You get so used to the uh, regen coming on, it just feels natural. And actually, coasting mode feels a bit weird when you uh, turn on uh, and turn off regen braking and use your coasting mode. It just just feels kind of strange um, just to like not have it do anything. So <laughs> anyway, regen braking, absolutely love it. I would not want to be without regen braking.
Now, the other thing people talk about is range anxiety. Have I had any range anxiety owning this thing? Um, the answer is no, basically none whatsoever because my circumstances actually suit using an electric car and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so no range anxiety. The only time I've had to sort of like f want to fill it up in a hurry is when one Sunday we made a decision, oh, we'd love to go to the you know beach up the coast and the, uh, it was only like a quarter full or something like that. So we couldn't actually get up there so I drove like 10 15 minutes away to one of the a few in Sydney are uh, fast chargers level 3 uh, 50 kilowatt fast chargers and I charged it up yeah I paid I don't know 15 bucks or something to for that but that's really the only time that I've ever had to really do that um, so yeah I'm very happy with um, the fact that most of my usage cases I can just uh, charge this thing at home because you know it's it, even not a, like a big day out we might do you know 50 or 100 kilometers or something like that and you come back at, at night you, you plug it in it takes two seconds to plug it into the uh, trickle level one trickle charger and it, it bobs your uncle you wake up in the morning and it it's basically back charged again so it's it's super convenient we've never had to visit a petrol station i do not miss petrol stations let me tell you so I've had no range anxiety but your mileage may vary on that um, of course because everyone's needs are, are different in that uh, regard and having said that really your decision to buy an electric car all hinges around your lifestyle where you live how you park your car like for us we park it in a garage at home it's easy to charge no problems whatsoever um, so we just uh, like plug it in when we get home and, and, and that's it and we've never had to worry about anything at all you know on the occasional mode oh we've you know we forgot to charge it or something oh, we might put it in eco mode just to like you know save a little bit just to you know ensure that we've got the capacity to get back but at, at no point in all of owning this have I ever felt oh we're we're gonna run out you know it's just it's just not a thing so yeah just plan your trips it's not a problem and if you don't have the ability to charge at home, you might have the ability to charge at work, uh, for example. And I've uh, occasionally charged mine at work and, you know, it's, it's just fine. But like mostly we charge it at home because I've got solar. The excess solar um, just charges this thing. So it's brilliant. So as to cost, I've actually charged this thing 46 times or roughly thereabouts, you know, like, and I'm just taking like full tanks like uh, we've pro I've probably plugged it in more almost certainly plugged it in more than that but let's just say six to 46 full charges of this thing I've used in the 17,000 kilometers that I've done in this thing in uh, 12 months but if I do need to charge it with like at night time when there's no solar then you know it's it costs me about ten dollars uh, to fill this thing up from empty but most of the time we charge it during the day from excess uh, solar so it's basically cost us almost nothing apart from the occasional um, you know when we're out and about uh, and we've had to pay a couple of times to um, fast charge the thing but uh, like apart from that even if I assume that 10 of those full charges were done at uh, night that's still like only like a hundred bucks or less um, for <laughs> like over 12 months actually using this thing so it's, it's just incredible like you know 12 like a hundred bucks in 12 months whereas a normal internal uh, combustion car my previous one uh, it, it would have cost me about twenty five hundred dollars so I'm, I'm basically saving two and a half thousand dollars a year just in petrol uh, costs so it's, it's a total no-brainer so over the uh, span of like a, a 10 year ownership uh, for example if you own the thing for a decade then that's twenty five thousand dollars you've saved just in petrol uh, it's it's unbelievable but even at the most expensive uh like level three charging station i would only be paying i think about 18 dollars to charge this thing up which is like <laughs> less than half the cost of an internal combustion engine car sure it takes longer like nothing beats an internal combustion engine car on a long road trip if you just want to eat up the miles and you want to take five or ten minutes to refill like you know i can be out in my old internal combustion engine car to be fair i can be into the petrol station fill up out get a couple of snacks in there and be out 
leave my windows and I can do that all in under three minutes and I can be out of there. Yes, I've timed it. So internal combustion engine cars still have that advantage in just being able to put the sheer amount of energy refill back into the car so yeah but still we just plug it into home it takes two seconds and charges overnight it's, it's ready to go I've had no problems whatsoever and as far as other uh, costs go I'm still on the original uh, tires of course I have paid for one service and that was hundred and sixty five dollars it's like a fixed uh, price thing with Hyundai uh, and yeah 165 bucks and I'll happily pay 165 dollars to maintain this thing every year it's a 12 month um, service interval and for all those people who crap on about oh you never have to service an electric car bullshit <laughs> the only difference is there's no engine but everything else remains the same you've got the power steering you've got the uh, suspension systems you've got the brakes of course um, they were talking can talk about the brakes in a minute um, and you've got uh, the like the cooling systems the aircon all these systems um, it, and a lot of them have to do with your safety as well I will happily pay $165 a year um, you know for for a mechanic to look over my car and make sure everything's like safe and still okay so you know, uh, yeah, sure, you don't have to get it serviced if you don't want to, but I, no, no, I'm going to get mine serviced every year for 165 bucks. Thank you very much. It's bugger all cost. It's a complete no-brainer. This is a one and a half ton lethal projectile. I'd like to keep it, uh, you know, relatively safe. Thank you very much. And as far as our daily use on this thing, I only charge the battery to 80%. That's a software limit in here. Um, and it just to like increase the life of the battery. We only charge it to 100% if we know we're gonna go on a long trip. And I've only done that like a handful of times um, that I've owned it. So yeah, 80%, um, I, I get 270 kilometers uh, from it and it, it just, it does the business for all my driving needs going up to the mountains and back. Yeah, so the range is not an issue with this thing. Now, um, we have used, when we go on our like really big trips, we have done like weekends away, family trips in this thing, but like our one like big yearly trip where we go away for several weeks and we take the bikes and we take, you know, everything, um, and we take the kitchen sink, um, then this car is just not suitable for that. It's not because of the range, it's because this is a physically smaller car and we can't fit everything in it. If we could fit everything in it if this was like an SUV sized electric car then yeah we would have I would happily take this on a uh, road trip you just have to plan a bit better generally especially with kids like we are not going to do more than like you know three or four hundred kilometers in a day anyway so you just like plan your uh, trips around that and um, once again your mileage may vary but you know with uh, two young kids in the car where we're not gonna be doing any more than what this thing could do in a day 315 or we might like fast charge it halfway we might do you know what might want to do four or even 500 but we can you know there's fast charge points at various locations along the um, you know the highways and trips that we want to do so it's not really a problem yeah so really I would not want to buy an internal combustion engine car again so I've had practically zero downsides from owning a fully electric car I, I I can't really think of any major downside but that's for my usage scenario as I said your mileage may, may vary like if you live in a densely populated area and you don't have a garage where you can readily charge it up you're gonna you know park your car on the street or whatever and you don't have the ability to charge it at work or whatever then yeah you an electric car is probably not for you they are not for everyone at the moment um, until fast charging stations are everywhere they're then fairly rare here in um, Sydney and Australia Australia in uh, general so you know if you can't charge it at home or at work you probably shouldn't be buying an electric car you'd really have to think hard but for everyone else anyone who can charge it at home or at work it, it's complete no-brainer there's there's no reason to buy an internal combustion engine car I just love the complete silence that I've stopped here now and there's uh, no exhaust whatsoever and uh, the instant acceleration and it just everything about an electric car feels fantastic the regen braking um, just knowing that you put in uh, energy back in the car no brake maintenance for example I, I actually did a video showing um, how uh, show, like I actually took my wheel off because I did actually get a flat in this thing and I took 
took my wheel off and there's no brake dust whatsoever after 12 months, none. <laughs> so you never, virtually never have to change the brake pads in this thing. Because most of the time I've got this flappy paddle uh, regen uh, braking, although even if I put my foot on the brake, um, on the brake pedal, it's still going to use the regen braking until it has to like really subtly stop and it determines that, oh no, I can't, uh, you know, I've really got to apply the disc uh, brakes to slow down. The regen's not going to do it. But um, I, I felt that happen, a, you know, a handful of times. But generally, the regen braking handles absolutely everything. And I, if you can, highly recommend getting the flappy paddles. But I um, tend to, look, I'm slowing down now. Oh, I had to put the brake on at the end for a bit more regen. But that, I believe that was almost all regen there. Um, stop, you know, stopping fairly suddenly at those uh, lights there. So, yeah, I just, I, I love everything about an electric car, and it saved me like 2500 bucks a year in cost, so um, it's, a, it's pretty much a no-brainer. So, they're my thoughts on owning an electric car. Um, yeah, highly recommend it if your circumstances and your budget allow. Obviously, they're a lot more expensive um, than a regular um, internal combustion engine car, like here in Australia, like at least double the price for an equivalent, um, like, you know, size and handling and e equipped car between a fully electric and an internal combustion engine car. But yeah, I, I just, I, I love my electric car. It's, it, I, I don't know a single electric car owner who would say otherwise. They all say the same thing. Yep, love it, never going back to an internal combustion engine car. It's just, yeah, absolute no brainer. All right, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the 2020 model Hyundai Ionic Electric Elite. That's the model I've got, none of that uh, premium rubbish, so I don't have the leather, leather seats or the sunroof or whatever it came with, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, I really like it. It handles like a real car. It's, it's the best handling car. <laughs>